today we are continuing our multi-part conversation about the amazing benefits of magnesium. We're talking about the science back benefits. What does the science tell us about how magnesium supports the physical and mental wellness of kids and adults? But today we're talking about magnesium for the ADHD brain because who hasn't had a problem with focus, right? And, you know, we're often quick to rush for a script, right? And, you know, medications that are for ADHD, 100% of the time have a clinical side effect, right? That's what we know through research. So those clinical side effects can be milder, like food restricting. It's not really mild. Um, <laughs> irritability or sleep problems. They're all going to get to you in the end, right? Or they can be more serious, like seizures and psychosis and things like that, that nobody's talking about. If you're looking for more support and how to support your child, whether they have ADHD or not, go to our free Facebook group, drroseanne.com forward slash group. But today we're talking about magnesium for the ADHD brain. So let's start with what science tells us. We know low serum levels of magnesium is associated with ADHD. I hope you hear that and are like, what? Holy cow. Why didn't somebody tell me about it? Well, that's why you're here. And, you know, if you love and care about anybody with ADHD, you know, share this with them. Share this with other Facebook groups, share that in the national groups, the Chad groups, the groups that are promoting only psychostimulants, because we need to know that if low magnesium levels, right, are associated with ADHD, why isn't your child being checked? Isn't that kind of simple, right? So, you know, sometimes the hardest things uh, are unnecessary. So, and we always focus on calming the brain and the behavior. So you can't separate out and just look for the one thing. There has to be a teaching of the desired behaviors, the shaping of desired behaviors. So how does magnesium specifically help the ADHD brain? This is what the research shows us, right? So it helps with neurotransmitter regulation. So again, we always think there's some type of pharma-based pill that's going to change your child's brain, but that's not the case, right? Things like magnesium, essential fatty acids, B12. How about things that aren't even related to supplementation? Food, uh, at physical exercise, um, PEMF and neurofeedback. There's a lot of things that help with neurotransmitter regulation. And, you know, that is important to look for safe, natural. And if your child has a low serum level, you know, putting him on a psychostimulant isn't going to help his magnesium serum levels go in. Ding, ding, ding. That's an unlock it moment for you. Okay. Um, so, it helps with regulating those brain chemicals that are our communication system that help our kids be focused and help them learn, okay? So NMDA receptor modulation. So if you heard me talk yesterday uh, about or in a previous episode about NMDA receptor modulation, we need our receptors in those sites working properly in order for your child to learn pay attention and just overall cognitive functioning and magnesium helps with that. It also helps with synaptic plasticity. So we need our, um, it, it, at the synapses, we need that area working flexibly. We need to make sure there's not too much excitatory activity. And in order for the, um, the brain to work properly, for your child to learn in order to pay attention. Now, magnesium, pretty cool, cross it over to the world of neurofeedback, affects brainwave regulation. So you, we often only talk about the neurotransmitters, right? We don't talk about gut health, and we very rarely talk about brainwave regulation, right? So for those that, you know, do neurofeedback, where it's a type, uh, you through the use of computers, you're providing feedback to the brain in order to regulate itself. Well, magnesium can do that. And research in this century, <laughs> in this past decade, in the 21st century here, um, has found that a lot of kids with learning issues have a problem with brain communication, 
not structural issues. And I can tell you that a lot of the kids that I work with who've been diagnosed with ADHD, right, which in theory means that their frontal lobes are underperforming. There's not enough juice in your frontal lobes and there's too many unfocused brain waves, which is pretty common um, for those with ADHD. But also the brain communication is very poor, sometimes excitatory, but often very low. And what we're seeing in research is brainwave communication, uh, that connectivity, those hubs, brain hubs are really important. So brainwave regulation is a way to get your brain hubs working better and magnesium supports that. How cool is that, right? So, um, and, you know, hopefully you're learning about our uh, multi-mag brain formula, drrosanne.com forward slash magnesium, because it has a lot of, it's yummy and it's sweetened with monk fruit and we t beta tested it on restrictive eaters. <laughs> <laughs> if restrictive eaters gave me the thumbs up, we're all going to like it. So magnesium supplementation has been shown to improve ADHD symptoms, right? And we learned that there's low serum levels and it, it can help. Let's talk about the ways behaviorally the research has shown us. And please go to the notes um, to see where the research of where this comes from. Um, because there's lot, there's really solid, nice research on magnesium. And thankfully for most people, it's very safe. You take it until bowel tolerance. You should want to always check with your provider and make sure you're taking the right kind. Our multi-mag brain formula has brain magnesiums in it. Has L3 and A, glycinate, magnate. L3 and A is hardly in any supplements because it's very expensive. Um, and you need a lot of it at a certain level in order for it to work. And a lot of supplements are garbage, right? They're in gummies. You're never going to get clinical levels for a child in a gummy. You're kind of wasting your time. And then they have other fillers. Um, and most kids can't take um, capsules. Um, and even with that, L3 and E, is a, you need a lot. So to fit it in capsules, you're going to need multiple capsules. So um you know, we really thought it through and made it a, not just a child, but a, uh, you know, a supplement for all family members. Okay. So clinically proven to reduce hyperactivity, inattention, and impulsivity. And there's actually some really nice research on how it pulls back impulsive behaviors. Not that inattention isn't tough to manage, right? When you're constantly calling kids and you're asking them, you know, over and over, did you hear me? Did you hear me? But impulsive behavior, you know, it can be hard. Those are the emails I get from my peeps. Like, how do I manage this? He won't keep his hand off his sister. You know, those kind of things. Um, it's also magnesium for individuals with ADHD has been clinically proven to reduce aggression, um, which is a challenging behavior. Again, you can see that what it does is it calms the brain so then it gives a little breathing room for some of those impulsive behaviors. Um, it's been clinically um, shown to improve sleep, sleep quality and reduce sleep disturbance. Uh, many individuals with ADHD have sleep problems, pretty serious sleep problems um, that I think get ignored. You know, kids are not supposed to snore, just so you know. So you always want to get their tonsils and adenoids checked if they are. It reduces signs of restlessness. Um, and you know, that's where a lot of our kids with ADHD get red flagged in a classroom for not sitting still. Um, sometimes movement is a good thing. I don't want them to get punished, but it does help to calm the body as well. It's clinically proven to improve emotional states. We know that it helps to, uh, reduce anxiety, support mood, um, but helps with that overall emotional regulation. And if you have, um, a rejection sensitive, um, dysphoria child, a child who's very reactive. This can help to calm, give a moment before the reactions happen. Um, or you have a limbic ADHD kid. I think they're all like just the same thing, but just different names could be really, um, really be a resource for you. Um, if you're interested in learning more about our magnesium, you go to drrosanne.com forward slash magnesium, but magnesium should be in every pantry. And it should, it's, kids need it, adults need it, 
uh, of every age, because as you learned during this magnesium series, and we'll continue to learn as we bring in medical experts to talk about magnesium, it is an essential nutrient. And I believe it's the most important nutrient in children's brains. And, you know, always talk to your provider, learn more, read the blogs, look at the research, but get started. You know, you can, <laughs> you can't just keep saying one day, today should be your day one. Thank you.